Hey there, did you do your homework from yesterday? Have you identified which of the life cycles and, and toxic cycles and programs that you seem to consistently run? Have you identified which ones of those, like which chakra it actually aligns with, it correlates to? Hope you did. If not, I want you to pause this. I want you to go back to yesterday's video and do that work and then come back for this, okay? Yes, I know, I give you homework. I'm so sorry. Not. My name is Dr. Lisa Brewer and I am a doctor of divinity and of metaphysics, so I cannot write your prescription, but I can recommend a good crystal. Anyway, so today we're going to continue on this path, okay? We're going to continue on this path of healing from the inside out and stopping what my dear uh, Auntie Iyanla, Iyanla Van Zandt, um, shout out, hi, um, what she calls interrupting the pathology, okay? And so that's what we're doing, right? We are going to interrupt the pathology. We're going to interrupt the cycles that you consistently find yourself in. We're gonna interrupt the programs that you consistently run. That's why I wanted you to identify those programs, identify those cycles, and then correlate them to one of your, or more of your chakras. So, okay, so now what are we doing with all of that information, right? What are we doing now with that? Now we're gonna take that information and one by one, and I'm not going to give you any specific order, but I will give you a hint. Start at the lower three. Okay? Start at the lower three chakras. So anything that is affecting or you find it is rooted in your root chakra, your solar plexus chakra, or your sacral chakra, not in that order. <laughs> root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus. Anything that you are finding that has any portion of a root or an origination, or seems to be like integrated deep within any of those three chakras, I want you to start there. It doesn't matter to me if it's the root and the heart, or the sacral and the heart, or the sacral and the throat, or the sacral and the crown, I don't care. But if any of those are, are have their origination in those three chakras, that's where I want you to start, even part of it. Now you might say, Lisa, well, what wouldn't have an origination there? Um, that you you can't trust your intuition. That probably, that's going to be like much more here. Or you can't hear. Like some people will tell me from time to time, I can't hear from God, right? Or I can't hear from my angels. Or I don't hear from my spirit guides. Or I don't, whatever, right? That's going to be crown third eye. That's not necessarily root sacral solar plexus. Um, mm, um, continually falling in love with the wrong person can be in both, but that's mainly a heart thing. Okay. So let's take this a step further. So let's say you have trouble setting boundaries with other people or, or, or you put other people's needs, wants, desires before yours. I'm going to have you deal with the heart chakra on that first before we deal with anything else. Because your heart's so big, right? You're so empathic. You feel so much. That's going to be that, okay? So things like that. Um, I don't speak up for myself. That's throat chakra, right? Um, so we may find further roots down further in of the lower three, but there's a reason. So we're going to deal with like financial stuff first. We're going to deal with stability for like housing or homes. We're going to deal with um, self-esteem, self-confidence. Um, we're going to deal with lack of creativity. Um, like people, like my ideas are never accepted or I don't have good enough ideas, right? That's definitely um, sacral or root chakra, right? It could be all three. So any of the things, any of the, any of the, these issues or these programs that have even a, you know, have a significant portion or they're to totally encapsulated within those lower three chakras, we're going to address those first, right? Because we have to have set, we have to have a what? Solid foundation. A what? Solid foundation for the people in the back. A what? Solid foundation. Okay. So. We're going to deal with that first. Now, how are we going to deal with it? The same way when we were working on healing and aligning 
our chakras earlier in this series, same thing. Only this time I'm going to take you a little bit deeper in the process. Because these are typically programs, ideas, situations that other people have put you in or programmed into your being from childhood or from young adulthood or teenage life. Like there's something that was introduced to you that you didn't innately, inertly come here incarnated with yourself. So now we got to go through this like forgiveness space. Okay, so I'm going to start this today and then we're going to continue the forgiveness conversation um, tomorrow. So this er, in the next video, the forgiveness space is this forgiveness healing is looks to me a little bit like this. The concept is, is you came here incarnated as an, inter an eternal being, right? We can all agree that we are energetic spiritual beings having a human experience. If you incarnated as a spiritual being, you came here with a lot more knowledge, understanding, and wisdom than you have access to in this human body. You already came here with all of that. What happens is then you incarnate as a baby and we play this forget game, like, oh, I don't know. And then we come back, right? We all our lives, right? We we're seeking to remember, to put our members back, right? To understand, to understand, to recall, bring it all back to us, right? So when you experience these things as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult even, but we're going to focus in on children, the child and the teenager, when you're experiencing this, okay, you, from a higher perspective, know this ain't right. Ain't nothing right about this at all. And as a child, you want to escape it. You want to change it. You don't want to be a part of it because you know this is not good for you. You know this isn't right. You know that somebody telling you that you're less than and you're not enough and you're not this and you're not that is not right. But you're powerless in your human experience in that moment to do anything about it. Why am I telling you all this? Because a huge part of this forgiveness healing and this forgiveness cycle, how I teach it, how I help my people that I work with to heal over time, right, is the forgiveness of self. Yes, forgiveness is for the uh, for you more than it is for the other person. Absolutely. But we negate, forget, don't bother to forgive ourselves. And I feel very strongly that we don't do that because we don't appreciate, honor, understand, whatever you want to say. We don't acknowledge the fact that we are eternal beings. We don't acknowledge the fact that we are aspects of God, of Mother, Father, God, of Supreme Creator, of Source, of the great spirit of the universe, whatever you identify that energy. We don't do that. And because we don't do that, we diminish our ability and our power to go through this process and reconstruct our lives. We, we, we diminish our ability to change the response, responsibility. We diminish our ability to be accountable or able to change, alter, interact with the accounting of something differently than we have historically, okay? We diminish all that. And because we diminish that, we diminish our ability to even be able to go through the healing process. And we take on all this guilt, shame, and all that blame. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. And then tomorrow, we're going to really dive deep into the process, right, of forgiveness healing. Okay. Thank you so much for being here with me. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow, whatever it is on whatever platform you're on. Peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. I love you. I love you. I love you. And do not ever forget, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. Talk to you soon.